This may be my favorite episode to date. Taylor Ray has blessed our channel with a powerful conversation. Tay is a creator of Sacred Funnels and the host of a five-star podcast called Sacred Work. Known best for her unique blend of spirituality and strategy when it comes to building sales funnels, Tay serves female entrepreneurs through her genius in marketing, automations, and systems that help them grow their impact and their income online. Building her own business to multiple six figures in less than two years, as a podcaster, course creator, and business coach, Tay teaches topics on online and email marketing, sales funnels, social media strategy, productivity, and strategy for women in business. In this episode, we discuss her journey, what sacred funnels are in business, and how they can create ease and flow and an abundance of wealth, the divine masculine and feminine structures in business, and the importance of knowing who you serve without allowing that to box yourself in. We also dive into the importance of email marketing should Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube disappear one day. This truly was such a beautiful conversation on how to authentically and fully embrace limitless abundance, surrendering, and trusting those little universal nudges when they show up. I think you're going to love this episode, so let's jump right in. I don't know what I would do without Kajabi. I use this platform to run my entire business as a coach, podcaster, and course creator. Kajabi is the only platform for online course creation where you can easily create, publish, sell products, marketing pages, sales funnels, online courses, and membership sites. You can do it all on this platform, which is why I am so excited to share it with you. It's never been easier to run your coaching business and Kajabi offers trainings and easy, beautiful templates for every step of the way. As a special gift to Yoga Biz Academy listeners, you can access a 14 day free trial by heading to yogabizacademy.com slash Kajabi. That's yogabizacademy.com slash Kajabi. Now let's get to today's episode. So Taylor, first and foremost, I want to thank you. I want to start by saying thank you for taking the time to do this interview today. I've been following you and learning from you through your podcast, through the sacred work and yeah. through the sacred fun of vault, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I truly just want to start by saying how grateful I am that you exist and for the work that you put out into the world, because it, in the last year, it has really changed my life and the trajectory of my business in more ways than I'll probably be able to express in this episode. So I just want to say thank you first and foremost, before we get going. That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me. That means the world. Like I can't even begin to tell you because I know that the work that you do is sacred. That's, you know, (laughs) it's so important that it's Mm -hmm. out there in the world and to know that, you know, those resources are supporting you is everything. So thank you for telling me that. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. So for anyone who may be listening, who may not be familiar with you, your work, And the way that you show up and create and empower women like myself Mm -hmm. and like many of the yoga teachers that will be listening to this, maybe we can start with a little bit of a background of you and what you do and what you may be working on. Yes, of course. No, again, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I love that your audience is so centered in yoga and I'm sure, you know, the holistic wellness and everything like that. That's something I'm so passionate about. So like prior to doing the work that I do right now, I was a personal trainer. So my first business was called The Fierce Project and it was all about um, eight week transformations for women. So it was about like finding your fierce. So yes, it was through fitness, but it wasn't just all about the physical. Um, So I just love that I'm like here and speaking to women who or I'm assuming predominantly women who are, you know, in the health space and the wellness space and, you know, getting out there and just sharing their beautiful light. Because honestly, like, and I love yoga, like I'm by no (laughs) means a yogi, but I love like going to a studio for a class or, you know, at the moment we're in lockdown in Melbourne, um, in Australia. So like YouTube yoga is getting me through. And so honestly, it's like, even that in and of itself, it's like your listeners, like that, like, the work that they're doing is changing lives like that is changing it for me, you know, being able to access, you know, yoga online and wellness and fitness and things like that through online resources. Like now more than ever, I, th- I know I've really deviated away from the question, but this is just no, what's no, coming it's through. It's like <laughs> now more than ever, I just truly feel like, you know, this is your time. Like this is the time that it's so freaking needed right now. It's always been needed, but it's so much more prevalent now. And, you know, people's lifestyles and things like that are changing 
things so much. So yeah, I sort of backtrack a little bit, but you know, that's sort of where I came from and then, you know, went through a huge shift and we can go as deep into that as you like, but I'll keep it surface for now. Um, you know, went through a massive shift when I was 25. So back in 2018 and basically had a full on breakdown burnout, literally just worked myself into the ground because I had the belief that building a business had to be hard. Like that was the story that I was telling myself. Um, so I was entirely in my masculine, like hustling my face off, working 25 hours a day, you you know, it was kind of like felt like that <laughs> where it was just like taking everything from me and yeah, literally had a breakdown physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, and that led me to my spiritual journey. So that was like the catalyst for everything really for me, where I then um, started to understand manifestation, started to understand the law of attraction, all the other universal laws, started testing and applying that to my life, completely shut down that business. It was, yeah, just, I couldn't do it anymore. And it was no longer in alignment for me. And I also felt that I was called in a different direction. And that's when I started my podcast, Sacred Work, and just started sharing there. And then that's evolved over the last three years. Um, And, you know, it's always been a theme for me within within working with women and empowering them to take control of their lives, to create, you know, abundance, to like create the reality that they are worthy of, whether that's in life or in business. Like that's always been so, it's just been my driving core motivation always. And you know, the involvement of my business has then, it's been beautiful. Like it's expanded into working with women who are then sharing their sacred work of the world and then supporting them with both, you know, the the physical and the metaphysical. So like the energetics and the strategic side of things. So I, you know, you know, in this, you know, as we record this, I'm probably the most well-known for blending the woo with the work. So that's my mm-hmm. whole thing is really blending the spirituality and the strategy because I know what it takes to build a business. It's not sit in your lounge room and meditate and hope someone hands it to you. Like as, as nice as that would be, there's still the action that we need to take and to be, you know, supporting the attraction and the way that the universe is delivering to us and allowing that flow by honoring, you know, the law of action, setting up the systems, honoring the ways in which we get to show up and build the masculine container that allows that feminine flow. First of all, your story is incredible. You were the first person that put those words in front of me, not just blending the woo with the work, but more so bridging the gap between the masculine and the feminine energies, which Mm -hmm. we're very familiar with in the yoga and energetic space, but I was very much in a similar path like you, where I was very much, very much in my masculine, very much in my yang, just striving, going, because this is what I was told I needed to do in order to have a thriving business in order to be a successful entrepreneur. And I was exhausted. I got really sick as well. It was, it was, it was awful. My mid twenties were really rough for me because I was, I was pushing too hard and I was not really, truly implementing the structures that were able to give me the freedom to flow in my feminine and to create. And I've always felt like I had so much kind of bubbling up to the surface uh, in terms of wanting to do and create. And I, I felt like I didn't have the proper tools to do it. I always felt stifled. I felt like I had too much on my plate and yet I wanted to add more to my plate and I didn't have the fluidity. And in the yeah. last year, you were the first person who gave me not just the language, but also the um, the relatability because you were speaking to me, you were literally speaking to me and um, and you gave me the systems. And so I, I am a big fan of you sharing your journey. And also um, I relate to you in so many ways. And I think a lot of the people that are going to be listening to this, a lot of the women are going to relate to you as well in that same capacity. Yeah. I love that. I appreciate that so much. I really feel like it's the story that so many of us are fed is that, you know, it has to be hustle. You have to do it the masculine way. And for so many of us and the women that I work with, we're all heart led soulpreneurs. Like we're women who it's not just this thing we don't care about. Like our work is an extension of us. And so, you know, we try to like cram it into this box and this way of being only to then hit burnout or our bodies respond and tell us, Hey, this isn't working. And a lot of the time we ignore it. That's what I did for ages until I ended up literally in hospital. Like, because I was like, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Ignore it. Ignore it. Oh, too much, you know? So it's about, you know, I think the work that I get to do is really about helping women to realize there's another way. And it doesn't mean cutting out the masculine. It just means a different approach to it so that you see it as something that's supporting the work that you are doing in the world. Yes. Yes. And I think that, 
um, as yoga teachers, we think just as spiritual entrepreneurs, there is this, this, um, negative connotation to those masculine structures at the beginning. There is, there's very much almost this repelling nature to that. You're like, I don't want to implement that. I don't even know how to do that. That's not going to work for me. Um, and so again, you, you definitely made that not only accessible, but also you made me realize how easy it would allow me to flow in my business and how many opportunities I could, uh, create the space for now because I had time, which was incredible. So for those teachers who are listening and who may not even know what a sales funnel is, can we maybe start with that portion? Can we, can, totally. can you give us a little bit yeah. of insight on that? Yes, yes, of course, yeah. of course. So for those that don't know, like a whole side of my business, the brand is Sacred Funnels. So again, it's about really seeing these systems, these processes, these automations as being sacred and supporting the work that you are putting out into the world. So, you know, it's exactly what you said, Amanda, where so many of us come in and we hear about sales funnels or maybe we have an experience of a sales funnel and it feels horrible. It's got that like bro marketing, click here, very aggressive scarcity mindset in a lot of cases kind of feel around it. It's either we experience that or we don't experience it, but it just seems really scary. And we sort of are like, hidden in the idea of fear that like, oh, that's too much for me. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to steer clear of it. And what that does, and this is the thing that like kills me, is for so many women that hinders us from actually getting our work to the people that need it and from us receiving the divine compensation that we are so worthy of, the money flow, because we're building businesses. So like, yes, we are here to open ourselves up to limitless abundance and to serve multiple, multiple, multiple people and to be not capped by time. And I think that that's, you know, a massive thing that holds so many of us back is that, you know, a lot of the work that we're doing is rooted in that one-to-one exchange or, you know, it has to be like in the physical, maybe, you know, especially for like yoga, it's like, okay, the only way that I can be doing this is if I I have, you know, a class and there's like 12 or 20 people in the class and that's my time in exchange for money. But a sales funnel, or as I call them, a sacred funnel is really about setting up an automated way in which you can allow leads and sales to be continuously coming into your business. So basically what you're setting up is like an entry point into your world where people come in and then you're nurturing them through a process. You're building that relationship with them, but it's automated. It's not you sitting there being like, okay, I've got to send this email and then wait for the reply and then send another email. Like, no, you're setting up your business to actually work for you. And that's what we always want is for our business to be like this beautiful aligned machine that is taking people automatically through the process that serves them the most. So to give you an example, you know, let's run with the theme of, you know, YouTube as the traffic source, right? So that's like the entry point that someone's coming in. They're watching YouTube videos, they're enjoying it, they're getting lots out of it, but they're like, you know what? I would love more. I'd love more support than, you know, just the once a week video that's coming out. So then you can have an you know, more than anything, you want to have call to actions in the content that you're putting out. A call to action is encouraging someone to take that next step. So maybe in that YouTube video, you say, Hey, if you love this, make sure you go and download my free 28 day yoga challenge guide, for example, some sort of freebie. So then you can have that linked in every single piece of content that you create and content is evergreen. It's up. It's always working for you. Someone can find it in a year and it's still going to work for you. They can click on that link. It's going to take them to a landing page. And then that landing page is where they are then going to go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They're going to read through, maybe read a little bit about you and be like, love this girl. Yes. Give me the guide. Terrific. That's the energy exchange right there. So we always talk about the equal energy exchange, whether it's money or time or whatever it is. But in this case, it's an email address in exchange for a free guide. So we always want to have some sort of free entry point like that. And then with your sales funnel, there's lots of different, like there's lots of different ways to structure out a funnel, but like to keep this really easy, you could then, you know, then have them see something that you sell straight away off the back. So instead of seeing a thank you page, it can be like, Hey, I saw you grab the 28 day guide. I'm so excited for you. And let's just say, you know, say maybe you sell, you know, as a yoga company, maybe you've got like the blocks or you've got the wraps or something, or a yoga mat, something like that. You could sell that straight away and just be like, Hey, if you want to improve your practice, here's the, you know, yogi's bundle that you can get, you know, here for this price. And there's the bundle you can have upsells and you can have downsells off the back. I'm not going to get too hectic, but basically it's about 
just realizing that like, okay, you can just nurture them through this process. They can see something. If they don't see something straight away to sell, that's okay. But then you want to have an email sequence that's going to continue to show up that's automated. So it's a welcome sequence into your world that's saying, hey, I'm Amanda or hey, I'm Tay, like great to meet you. This is a bit about me. And then you can have like 7, 14, 30 days of emails done. You write them once and you let them work for you forever. And then people are coming in and you're building a relationship with them automatically. They're not waiting on you to show up and be like, Hey, here I am. Can I help you? You're sh- you're showing up for them right away. And then you just continue to nurture them. And then you can direct them to your other products, offers, services, coaching programs, whatever it is that you've got. That was a really, really beautiful way to kind of, to kind of package that and explain that together for the yoga teachers listening. Yeah. Yeah. I think so many yoga teachers or spiritual entrepreneurs, we have the the platforms, we have the social platforms. So we have the Instagrams and we have the Facebooks and we have, and the relationships stay there. This happened to me in July, all the whole month of July for, I don't know what reason. Well, I do know now I was hacked. Um, (laughs) Facebook disabled my, (laughs) disabled my Facebook account and my business account and my pages and my groups. And I mean, every single point of contact that I had through those was gone for 30 full days, which, you know, could be stifling for your business. If you have, if you don't have some form of communication via email outside of that. So that is something that I, I, I really try to help a lot of the yoga teachers that I work with set up on their end. What is, what's the most common myth that you, that you want to debunk when it comes to sales funnels? Cause mm. like we said at the beginning, they have a, this kind of negative connotation and, um, this almost like when you say the word sales funnels, people get a little repelled by it. So what's, what's kind of, a, um, the biggest yeah. myth that you want to debunk with that? Yeah, I think there's, there's probably two that stand out the most. I think first and foremost, it's that it's really hard <laughs> and that it's this really scary thing. And like, well, I couldn't possibly do that. Like, I don't know it. So, and it's like what you said, don't know what you don't know, but it's also about like, sometimes we do know what we don't know. And then that feels terrifying. So it's like, okay, I've heard of sales funnels. I've seen, you know, Russell Brunson, or I've seen click funnels, or I've seen, you know, the ads and it just seems you know, for one, incredibly male dominated. Um, But also it has that like the the tech intensity, I think, where people are like, I'm not tech savvy. I don't know. I could have, it took me forever to figure out reels. Like what am I supposed to do with a funnel, you know? (laughs) So I think a lot of the time, a lot of people struggle with that. It's just this belief that it's a difficult thing. Um, But I promise you, it is not as hard as you think that it is. Like we live in an incredible time and it's only getting better. Like I can't even begin to tell you the platforms that are out there now and that are continuing to be developed. It's so much easier than it used to be. And like, I wasn't even in the funnel world when it was hard, but like hearing from other people of like stitching programs together with having their web hooks and all this sort of stuff and hoping things work. I was around for like parts of it where Zapier was like the little sticky tape and it still is. It's amazing. Um, But you don't need it for everything anymore. A lot of things have beautiful, like cohesive integrations between platforms you know, it used to be so much harder, whereas now a platform like ClickFunnels or a platform like Kajabi, it's going to give you that all in one. You don't have to have 18 moving parts trying to figure out how they all speak to each other. And then feeling like you have that broken funnel of like, okay, someone bought something and now I'm getting harassed because it didn't send out when it was meant to and blah, blah, blah. That's not going to happen. Like it's beautiful. And it's also designed to be easy. So like I'm, couldn't code to save my life. Wish I could. Maybe one day it's something that I'll learn, but I'm not a coder. Like it's at school. I was like, IT is not for me. Like backed out of that as soon as it was, (laughs) no, it was an elective. (laughs) Yeah. But it's so weird because now I would consider myself like a woman in tech. Like so much of my work is supporting women in the tech side of their businesses and like building out online businesses. And it's just amazing to me. It's like, I would never have thought of myself as being techie, but trust me, if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. It's these platforms. It's literally drag and drop. Like it's not hard. Like you're not in there. You're not doing coding. It's like, Oh, that looks nice. I'm just going to pull it over here. Great. Like, and it's prompting you through the whole thing. Plus there's so much 
support. You know, obviously I've got lots of programs that help with sales funnels and exactly how to do it and walk through tutorials, but I'm not the only one. Like there are so many people and so many resources. And we've talked a lot about YouTube today. Like YouTube's your best friend. Google is your best freaking friend. Like I've taught myself so much from researching. Obviously you can invest in programs that are going to shortcut the process for you. But if you're just getting started, like don't be afraid of Google. Like get in there, like start to get your hands dirty, learn and realize that it's actually not as scary or as hard as you think that it is. Like once you just start dabbling, I think as well, can I swear on this podcast? A hundred percent. I love this mention. Yeah, but like seriously, you can't fuck it up. Like I really think that that's the most important thing. You can't fuck it up. Like, okay, so you get in there and you make a mistake. Great. Celebrate the shit out of that. Like you're learning, you're continuing to progress. Like you do not have to be perfect right off the bat. You don't have to know it all when you get started, but just go into it with an open mind and just take that one step and go, okay, beautiful. I've learned something new today. I celebrate myself for that. Tomorrow I'll learn something new and don't feel like you have to go from literally zero to a hundred overnight. You don't have to be an overnight funnels guru, but if you can create a freebie and set up an opt-in page, which again, there's templates for all of this stuff on these platforms, like Kajabi, ClickMonts, they give you the template. So like, you didn't even have to really customize it if you didn't want to, like you could, you know, maybe change your brand colors to make it a bit on brand, Mm -hmm. but like, it's that simple to get started. And then know that it's an ongoing journey and you can continue to iterate and to shift and to improve over time. And that's the other piece too, is like marketing is testing. I think a lot of us forget that. And we just think, okay, well, maybe it didn't click the first time. So it must be a terrible resource. It's like, no, maybe you just need to tweak something little in the way that you're putting it out there. And so just being open to that ongoing journey. I, I got into Kajabi after Sacred Vault and your whole tech series and kind of going through all of the platforms that I might need. And I started experimenting with them and I fell in love with Kajabi right away. I'm still using it now, but you're right. I at first opened it and I got overwhelmed. I was like, I don't know how to use this. I don't know. Kajabi has incredible, incredible tutorials that are so easy to follow that walk you step by step by step through the process that it is really accessible to anyone and everyone. And like you mentioned already, Yes, there's YouTube as well. We can always just hop on YouTube and people just put out the most amazing content on how to's for any of these platforms. So it is very, it's very easy. I love Kajabi as well because it has all, it's all encompassing, which is Mm. incredible. It's all encompassing. It's got everything in there, which is beautiful. It has the capacity for you to start off small and grow. So Mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful platform. I love, 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 love using Kajabi. So thank you for recommending that to me. (laughs) Pleasure. No, it's so good. It's good because you can get in there and play with the trial, but even so like after that, and I think as well sometimes, and I just say this because I know when I was starting out, I definitely had fear around investing in my business and like, oh gosh, like $150, $200 $150, $200 a month, you know, oh, can I really afford that? But I think it's also about recognizing that you're investing in your business, the return that that's going to create for you, you're opening yourself up. So yes, let's say, you know, you get Kajabi and it's $150 or it's $200 a month. Sometimes that can sound really scary, but I encourage you to reframe it too in terms of, okay, well, if I'm getting, you know, an income from a client, how can I reinvest that back into the growth of my business? And let's say that that allows you to then, invest in a platform like Kajabi, I think as well, it's important to realize, and I always remind my clients of this, that it's so much cheaper than if you had a brick and mortar store or like a studio, not that there's, those are amazing. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but, and you know, maybe you'll evolve to that over time if that's where you want to go. But for right now, if you're just getting started to be able to run a whole business for $200 a month, you're winning at life. Like that is, there's, like I said, there's literally never been a time like it, like right now where we're like the forefront people who are like breaking ground on this. That's amazing because there's, you know, there's so much opportunity, but also we have access to these platforms that make it so easy. So I think just that reframe can help a lot of people when it just comes to the fear around spending. On that note, you have a masterclass, I believe, called the Passive Income Formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you about it. Tell us a little about that. 
Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, it's, you know, you guys can go and do it at any time. Um, it's all linked on my website. So super easy if you want to go and grab it. But um, yeah, basically the passive income formula, like it's really about understanding that there are ways for you to be building out your passive income. <laughs> so your passive <laughs> income is basically money that is flowing to you without you needing to do anything. So you've done it once and then again, create it once, let it sell for you forever. So I want you to get to a point like I do where, you know, I wake up in the morning and it's like beautiful payment received, payment received, payment received. Like that's what your inbox should be looking like. Like I think a big thing here is about remembering that, you know, the beauty of online business is you can set up a way to attract money rather than chase it and to attract clients rather than be chasing them. And that's what the passive income formula is all about. So it's about realizing. So I teach a lot about sacred funnel math and understanding. Again, we forget this and some of us want to choose to ignore it. Maybe year 10 maths has left us scarred for life. But like, trust me, the math side of your business is so empowering once you start to understand it. So it's about realizing, you know, there's a thing called a conversion rate. So a lot of people, so right, you say you've got your landing page, there's going to be X number of, we're going to throw in some algebra, X number of people who are going to land on that page. There is a percentage of them that will convert. Like that's just fact. And there's industry standards and yes, they change a little bit year to year, but there's a rough estimation of what it is that you would expect from different funnels and what it is that you've got set up. And I think this is really empowering because I think a lot of the time we take it really personally. If we're not getting the result that we think that we wanted, we're like, oh my God, people hate us. No one likes it. I'm not making any money. I should stop. I'm embarrassed. What do people think? But it's maybe it's just about realizing that you're just not getting enough eyes on the page. So it's about remembering that, okay, if you've got, you know, X number of people hitting the page, a percentage of them will opt in. They'll say yes. They'll see the next stage of your funnel. Guess what? Percentage of them will say yes. Great. Next stage of the funnel. Percentage of them will say yes. It continues. Obviously, there's a limit. You're not going to like have 50 upsells. That would be horribly spammy for anyone. Like there's ways to be setting it up and you want it to be an integrity. But we can estimate and know like, okay, cool. If I have a thousand people see this page, I would expect that, you know, let's just say, I don't know, 300 people are going to go through. Amazing of that. Maybe a hundred people will buy. Amazing of that. Maybe 25 people will buy the upsell. It continues like that. And this is the passive income formula. So then when you have, you know, an offer and you complement it with an upsell and then maybe a downsell or a bump, you know, something at the checkout, I know I'm throwing a lot of lingo at you, but, um, you know, just additional add-ons, say like something else that they can purchase while they're there, you are amplifying the average cart value. So the average that people are spending when they're coming through your funnel. And this is how we can amplify out our passive income so that, you know, and again, this, I know, you know, if you get just getting started, don't get overwhelmed with this. But if you are further ahead, I feel it's important to say this, Um, you know, Facebook ads, like a lot of people right now are talking about, oh my God, Facebook ads, the cost, blah, blah, blah. Again, if you have your funnel set up, then you're not worried about that because off the back of the front, so you have your front end offer that pays for your ad cost, but then the the sales that happen after it in the same funnel, in the same instance while someone's there, that's your profitability. So that's your profit margin off the back. So it's not just, okay, that one thing that I sold for $7 and it cost me $8 to get someone to see it using ads. Great, now I'm down a dollar. That's obviously not, you can't run a business like that. But if you have something for $7 and then you have a $27 add-on and then a $97 upsell, something like that, again, a percentage of those people are going to be buying. So they're going to start to offset your ad cost. So I just feel like that's a really important little hack to realize is like, it doesn't have to stop at that first offer. This is the beauty of setting up a sacred funnel. The reason I'm so passionate about this work and why I love you (laughs) so much is because you make those traditional sales concepts so easy for us spiritual entrepreneurs to understand. And I think that's where the disconnect is, is that we just, a lot of times, if we don't necessarily come from business backgrounds, so many of us don't. And so those basic numbers, like you're talking about the sacred geometry, the math is lost. We don't, we've never seen it before. We don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. And so we do get really 
kind of discouraged when we don't have enough people signing up and moving. But when we don't have those sales structures or those sales funnels, that structure implemented, it's very, it becomes a very rigid and a very challenging um, yeah. a day-to-day, very challenging yeah. day-to-day for us in our business. So I yeah. love I love being able to, I, I know you threw out a ton, a ton of uh, vocabulary and this is <laughs> yeah. for, for anyone who may be listening, this is going to be an ongoing uh, conversation for sure. It's something that I'm very passionate about speaking to and, and helping because it has helped me. I mean, you have really helped me so much in the ease and flow and, and you're right. It is not, it really is not that complicated, but it can feel and look very daunting when you're first kind of approaching it and learning it. And yeah. once you get into the ease and flow of it, it's, it's almost second nature. Exactly. That's it. And that's exactly what you said. You're just learning, a, you know, a bit of a new vocab and some new skill sets. And I think making that an exciting thing and maybe carving out a little bit of time in your routine, in your weekly schedule where you allow for that business development. So maybe it's, you know, an hour a few times a week where you're like, okay, this is my hour for expansion. This is where I sit down and I make myself a hot cup of cacao or something nice, cup of tea. I put on my favorite music and I learn and I make it a beautiful experience of expanding myself so that I can expand my business. And like we said before, it's not fearing it. It's just celebrating yourself for going into the unknown and knowing that you're going to come out the other side, you know, more skilled, more abundant, you know, having a bigger impact. And I think that that's just incredibly beautiful. I love that. I love that. Tay, I've seen you go over the last couple of months through a little bit of a transformation. And so I want to kind of dive into that a little bit and just from a point of letting us know what you're currently working on, what you're launching, what the shifts are, because I know there's been some shift in your business and I really want to honor you and what you're doing and be able to share that with everyone. Love you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it's been beautiful. So I actually went through, I'm in my Saturn return right now. So it started in March for me and I didn't even know anything about Saturn. I'd heard it maybe once, but like had no idea. And then I I was was intense. So, (laughs) oh my God, (laughs) so was mine. (laughs) And like, literally, I think for everyone, right? Like it's, for those that don't know, Saturn return, basically it's where Saturn returns to the place that it was when you were born. So it happens and everyone's like, oh yeah, cool. But it's like, no, no, wait, wait. It happens every 27 to 30 years. So it's somewhere between 27 and 30. That's going to hit you. Don't be scared of it. I think a lot of people find that to be like, oh my God. And someone, the person that told me, she actually DM me on Instagram and she said, Hey, babe, are you in your sudden return? And I was like, I don't know. What's that? Like, had no idea. She'd known about it forever. And she was like, oh, like when I was 23, I was like freaking out. Like, it's coming. It's coming. Don't like, do not be scared of it. I think for me, I really look at Saturn return as this beautiful time. Saturn, you know, really governs looking at, uh, again, a lot of the masculine sides of things. So a lot of that comes up and really looking at how you, have you integrated the lessons that have come up for you through your life? That's probably the best way I could describe it. Uh, Have you integrated? Amazing. Other things you haven't, whoopsies, that's okay. They're going to come to the surface so you can really look at them. Which might sound scary, but you're also going to come out the other side, letting go of a lot of shit that doesn't serve you, feeling so much more in alignment. So I think it's something to celebrate rather than fear. But that started for me in March. And again, it's whole year for me, but just I have another return, I think, coming very soon. So I'm prepared. Um, But, (laughs) you know, for me, that was around the time, again, that I started, like things started popping up for me around human design, looking at um, my human design type, I'm a reflector, which I didn't really know anything about what that meant, but since have found out a lot. So it's like 1% of the population, uh, we're here to be mirrors. So like, literally that's my whole role is to be a reflection for people around me to show them, you know, are you in alignment or are you not? Um, it also, you know, it's really about looking at, my decision-making cycle is 28 days. So it's like just so many things like came up to be like, oh, wow. Like there's so many ways in which I, there's little integrations and things that need to be looked at. There was relationships, friendships that fell away for me, um, inner work around, you know, inner child, shadow work, validation, worthiness, um, authenticity, you know, a lot of that. And so this all really strongly came up for me around March of this year. And it was 
fucking hard. Like, I'm not going to lie, like a lot, a lot of tears and a lot of like, what the hell am I even doing? Like, you know, and I, I do love to share this because I know a lot of the time, especially if you are getting started, you can come into this world and see people who have been in it for a while and be like, oh my God, they have this shit together. They're so like, everything looks so easy. Like they just know. And it's like, no, no, we're, we're still going through it. Like no matter where you're at, you're always going to go through those continual challenges as you keep progressing through level on level. So yes, we're all, all of us. And like, I got lots of friends who have been in this for a long time with me. And like, again, same thing. We're always coming up against different cha- challenges and opportunities to grow. And um, anyway, it's like me, a video game with like a boss at the end. And every time you level up, you got to totally. go to the boss. And then go to the- <laughs> You're like, did I go through the check mark? I just really need to know <laughs> if I reset, I'm good. Um, but again, it was that fear too. And the reset is real. Like, you know, looking at, oh my God, is this, have I gone in the right direction? Have I not? And I bring up the reflector side of things because what I've really learned to honor within myself and especially in the last six months is as a reflector, I am not supposed to put myself in a box. And I have tried for a really long time to build those walls up like there's no tomorrow. Like, hey, here's my box. This is where I fit. I need to sit right in here. And I've done it multiple times. And I've shifted directions a lot in my business because of trying to go so deep into that one box only to realize, hey, this so much resistance here. What the hell is going on? Why is this so hard for me to stay in this fucking box? Yeah. And I think that this is important too, because as well, and don't get me wrong, there is a place for niching. I think that it is important to know who you serve and how you serve, but give yourself room to breathe within that and don't feel as though, okay, that's my niche. So no one should ever know anything else about me ever again. Like I can only speak about this one thing. And that's kind of what had happened to me. I'd gone in and out of different things and then, you know, had really situated myself in the brand of sacred funnels. And this is what I'm here to do, which again, I still love. It's still part of my brand. But what I realized going through all of this was that's not all that I am. And I actually, it was almost crippling to me to not show the other sides of my life. Like I said, I was a personal trainer. So health, wellness, everything is so important to me. I love sharing that stuff. I love sharing my relationship. People see my partner, James, on my stories all the time. I love to share my life. I love to share so much more than just the strategy of funnels. And that was actually crippling to me. And so, yeah, it was a really interesting time where I won't lie. Like there was parts of me where I was like, oh my God, should I just like pull that whole side of things down? Should I stop? And I'm very grateful for the people that I have surrounding me, the support that I have um, in my life. It was like, Tay, come on, like (laughs) know that this work, as you would say, is sacred. There are so many people that this is helping. You get to have that and you get to be doing other things. You get to be both. And my mantra really became like, I'm everything and nothing. Like I get to be everything that I desire to be and also nothing at the same time. Like I'm fluid. I get to move through, bring out whatever is most in alignment for me. And so, yes, even though sacred funnels was, it was rooted in the blending of the masculine and the feminine. I felt like within myself, I'd shoved away a lot of the feminine. And as much as I was helping other people to learn about that and integrate that, especially within their businesses, I had shut that side down a lot, even though when I first started this business back in 2018, when I first started this podcast, all I taught was manifestation. That's it. That was the only thing. I came into this world teaching manifestation, law of attraction and everything there. Um, I had a business background, like I did business at university, I did marketing. So like that was how that all integrated going forward. But it's almost like I had lost it. It's almost like I'd sort of shifted so much into the business that I forgot about my roots and what actually brought me in here and who I internally truly am. And so that's what this whole shift has been most recently is bringing back the beauty of, and it's amazing because like, I think most people would be like, Tay, we've always sort of seen that from you externally anyway, like in your stories and your posts. But for me, within my mind, I was trying to be like, I'm this or this, not both. And so I think for me, it's been a real permission giving around you get to be both. You get to show up and serve in all ways. And that's been so beautiful. So there's just been this integration where, yes, I'm serving coaches, I'm serving course creators, but I'm also serving women who truly desire to embody their authenticity, who desire to create an abundant reality, who desire to just feel joy within themselves and to learn the manifestation side of things, understanding 
those principles. And again, I have lots of different ways around, again, like you said, like for me, creating frameworks, principles, ways of doing things that a lot of people kind of miss. They're like, okay, like attracts like, and that's it. I'm like, no, (laughs) there's lots of missing pieces here. So, you know, bringing in all of those so that they're tangible and easy to learn and implement and very big on step-by-step practices that allow people to actually apply them to their lives. Um, so yeah, that's been the shift. And we, I brought out, um, my first book, which is very exciting called the manifesting method. Um, and that's just been so beautiful. Like, yeah, it's honestly like my heart and soul, like it's 22 chapters and it's just breaking down the principles of manifesting so that you can truly apply them. And so, yeah, just integrating that and having that side of things come back has just been beautiful. Um, relaunching a mastermind, which has just been an absolute gift and joy, like working with women in there who are scaling to their first five figure months. Like, and again, that's really that divine blend of masculine and feminine there. Like some days we're talking about how to create a landing page other days we're talking about how to sync your business with your cycle like and it's so like doesn't matter like it's all such a a part of it um and so yeah it's just honestly I just feel like I'm just in this beautiful place of alignment and also knowing that that's going to shift and expand over time and not putting that pressure to be like okay this is me and this is me forever and I can never be anything else it's like you get to be everything and nothing Oh, let me start off by saying (laughs) that you are being an absolute reflector right now in your human design for not just myself, but for so many people that I'm sure are listening. You you. are, I feel like I just heard my story just said back to me. (laughs) You just, you just reflected my whole story back to me. I, um, I think we all struggle, especially myself with wanting to do so much and not wanting to be put in a box. I, I want to niche down and I want to really dive into a portion of my work and really create an Excel. And yet there's so many aspects of what I feel I am capable of doing and what I enjoy. And I want to share that with everyone, especially on these social platforms that we show up and we want to be authentic and we want to be aligned and we want to really showcase who we are. And there are days where it feels fluid and there are days where it feels challenging because you're like, well, I want to show that, but is that in line with what I'm doing? And so the the, the internal battle is so, is so real. And I think you nailed it when you said as, um, as entrepreneurs, as, as business owners, we are very much, it's very easy and almost seamless for us to fall into that masculine Mm -hmm. and to forget that we really need to nurture our feminine. Once we get into the roles and into the tasks and the day-to-days of what it takes to run our business, it's very easy to just be in this steamroll, steamroll, steamroll (sighs) that we forget to kind of pull back and just sit and be like, okay, what feels good today? Mm -hmm. And as women, even more so, you just said some days we're talking about cycle syncing. I have, I've been talking about cycle syncing with my girlfriends and with my clients for (laughs) about six months. (laughs) Yeah. It's so powerful. Oh my goodness. (laughs) It's so powerful, but it's something that has been, it's such a simple concept that has been lost in our culture and that we, and really, really, really is such a powerful source for us to harness that now we can implement, not just in our daily lives to use our energy on any given day in any given week to really harness our energy, but also to be able to implement that with our business. It's like, how can we, how can we cycle sync, not just for our personal lives, but even more so for our business. So we can show up. Yes. Oh, it's so important. Like, and like the, the traditional business corporate world, it's, crafted to men, like to their cycle. So like how we have a 28 day roughly cycle, men's cycle is 24 hours. So like, that's why like they're waking up in the morning and they're like, like, you know, they're up, they're ready to go. Amazing. You know? And then it's like, okay, moving through the day. And then you notice like for guys generally, it's sort of by the end of the day, they're really tired. They're worn down. That's the end. Okay. Got to go to sleep. And then up in the morning, our, that cycle that they have over 24 hours, we have over our month. And so the, the traditional nine to five day is crafted for that masculine side of things. And I think, you know, as women, we are creating that new paradigm. We are building businesses that we get to craft in the way that are most in alignment for us. And, you know, I talk to my clients about this, but they're creating events and things like that and really structuring like, okay, where in my cycle am I setting the date for that event? Because 
I don't want it to be right before I'm about to get my period because that's when I'm really grumpy. I'm really self-critical. I'm tired. Okay, it's not going to be then. When is it going to be? Probably more around the time when I'm actually ovulating and my energy is really high and I love being around people and I'm feeling feeling myself. Like, you know, really looking at that. And we have the power to do that in creating our own businesses. And I just find that to be such a powerful thing once you give yourself permission to tap into that because as well, that goes against the hustle and grind mentality a lot of just like demonizing when we feel like we need rest. And I've been there a million times. I literally ended up in hospital. Like I had a breakdown because I was like, no, 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 I haven't done enough. I'm only working like 80 hours a week. Don't worry about it. Like literally like got to push, got to push. It's like, no, like honor the time when you need rest. Like when you're doing that, when you're filling your cup up, when you are tapping into your higher self and what serves you the most energetically, you're on the frequency that is going to call in what it is that you desire. And then your action aligns with that. So I think that, you know, being able to do that is transformative in the way that you run your business. And then as a result, the results that you create. Have you read In the Flow? No, but it's on my, it keeps coming up. So I'm like, okay, I've just done a lot of like reading and research and podcasts and stuff, but that just keeps coming up. So it's on the list. (laughs) It's a great one. I'll link it for anyone who's interested. It's a great book. I read it probably three months ago. And I said to myself, imagine if I had read this when I was 15. Imagine (laughs) the ease and flow of my life. Like how many struggles, how many battles. How beautiful though that we get to pass that on to the next generation. I was literally thinking about that this morning. Like, you know, if I have a daughter, how my mom was amazing. Don't get me wrong. And she was beautiful in her education of what it is to get a period and all that sort of stuff. However, I think that the world, and it's so beautiful, has shifted so much around this. And it's, you know, talking about periods was terrifying. Like maybe you had the Dolly Doctor sealed section and that's kind of where you read anything. Whereas now it's spoken about so beautifully and in such an empowering way. And I just think that that's so amazing to think about for the next generation after us, whether it's your kids or kids you experience, you know, you're in their lives. We get to pass on a very different experience of this. Oh, I think it's so much for me and I'm sure for yourself, it is, it is the why it is mm-hmm. whether I have a daughter or not, or nieces, nephews, children, yeah. any, I love children. I love to work with children. So it is being able to do the work so that we can not only build the world, but also the vocabulary, but also the energy totally. to elevate the next generation is everything. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is, it yeah. is everything. Yeah. And I think that's what's so exciting about the work that we're doing is that it is just by us showing up in all the different layers and capacities that we show up, it's elevating. Exactly. And that actually brings back what I wanted to say earlier, you know, where you were saying the struggle is real around, um, you know, do I share this? Is it in a line? Like, oh, but I teach this. Can I share that? I think what you just said absolutely nails it. And this is a big thing that I, as a, you know, as a reflector, I've learned it, but I really think that it's applicable to everyone. I don't care what your human design type is like you being you and you showing up like that is enough. Like that is you empowering other people. That's really become a mantra for me of like me as I am, that's enough. I get to show up as I am as the most authentic version of me and to know that that's going to reach the people that it needs to reach. And it's going to have some sort of impact could be absolutely tiny. And I might never, ever know about it, but I know that for other people, I know that other people sharing their day to day lives who are just like, oh, I use this when I clean, I don't know, my shoes or like I, this is some workout that I did or whatever little hacks like that. I can see it in my life, like in different things that I do. It's because I've learned from other people sharing and yes, we have niches and yes, we have different ways that we products that we sell or services that we offer, but that doesn't mean that that's where you stop. And I think it's really important to realize that people are going to resonate with all of you in a different way. And that's what makes us different. That's what makes, you know, you specifically the person that someone picks over someone else who's offering the same service. They resonate with you, whether it's the fact that you love plants and they love plants, or, you know, you share the Netflix series that you're watching and they're like, oh my God, me too. And so they have that connection to you. It's that. And I think a lot of the time with niching, we feel like, oh my God, I have to turn off every other aspect of me. That's not the niche. And it's like, no, like that's where people are really going to connect with you. They're going to relate to you. They're going to build that relationship with you. Don't turn that off. Like turn it up. I think that, you know, honestly, that's where people are going to connect with you the most. And just don't be afraid of it. I love that. I think that's how we move from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. 
where we're not we're not terrified that by us showing up in a saturated space or not that yeah. we're going to be enough if we just show up and we know that by showing up we are holding space for others to show up we take away the fear we remove the ego from it and we are just yeah. we literally are just showing up exactly oh it's it's yeah. liberating it's liberating 100% there's room for all of us at the table. Some of my best friends in business do this, almost the exact same work that I do. And we share each other's stories and she's doing this, she's launching that, I'm doing this, they're doing that. Because it's like, there's room for everyone at the table. Literally limitless abundance, people. Like it's limitless. So like one person's success does not take away from yours and vice versa. And so just knowing, and it's, you know, I've had situations where I've been like, you know what? This person, you know, might've come to me and I'd be like, you know what? I don't think you're quite the right fit for me. Why don't you go and learn from this person over here? Very similar services to what I have, but just knowing that you're more in alignment for this person and celebrating that rather than being like, okay, I've got to cling to every single thing ever because if I don't, then I'm never going to have enough. It's like, no, no, let's tap into that abundance mindset. And it comes back down to, you know, like what you were saying is you are you, you are enough. You get to show up. Other people are doing the same thing. Celebrate the shit out of that. Collaborate with them. That's amazing. It doesn't take away from you and the people that are meant to work with you. I'm going to celebrate the shit out of you in this episode. (laughs) (laughs) And you, and you. (laughs) Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You really are such a gift. I'm, I'm so honored to have you on this podcast and to just get to know you and to see the work that you're doing and and to watch that elevate. Thank you for sharing not just the transformations, your Saturn return. You said you have another one going on. Coming Sending up. Sending yeah. you so much beautiful energy. It really is for anyone who who wants to look into that for themselves. It is um it is a beautiful transformation in your life. And so like you said earlier, it's nothing to be terrified of. It's just an not opportunity to it's a t- an opportunity expand. to level up and expand. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Is there anything you, else you wanted to share with us today before I let you go? I know I've taken up so much of your time already, but I'm so, I'm so excited oh, to finally speak pleasure. with you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Honestly, it's just been a joy and it's just such a beautiful conversation. And I'm very grateful to be able to speak to your list and your audience and hopefully they've been able to take at least just one thing out of this that resonates and honestly marinate on that like if there's something that sparked something within you you know this is this is my like woo side I'm like trust 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 that like intuitively that's coming through for you for a reason like There'll be something in here that's spoken to you, or it might not have even been the words that I said, but it might have sparked a thought process in your mind, or it might have reminded you of something that you were thinking about last week. And it's just about realizing that you are intuitively guided at all times. The universe is always, always dropping signs in front of you. It's always placing little things. It's coming through me. It's coming through Amanda. It's coming through your mom, your friend, your your dog, like little things are coming through trust that that's coming through for a reason. And if you feel that nudge, if you feel something within your gut, that's like, Hey, I feel like I should look into that. Maybe I need to Google that, or maybe I need to find out a little bit more, or maybe I could say something about this on my stories today. Trust that. And just know that it wouldn't be being shown to you if it wasn't meant for you and whatever it is that you are called to, like the universe isn't playing a joke on you. It's not tricking you. It's giving you the steps, the seeds and saying, Hey, do you want this? reach out and take it because honestly, it's waiting for you. It's just up to you to say yes to it. Mm, That was beautiful. Let's all marinate on that. Thank you again for helping us to show up. Pleasure, goddess. Thank you so, so much. (laughs) Appreciate you. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please make sure to leave a review on iTunes and share on your stories and tag me at Amanda X Pause. If you're looking for more support as you grow your yoga business, please head to amandapaz.com to get access to all of my courses, coaching programs, and tons of free resources to help you step into your power as a yoga entrepreneur. I look forward to watching you rise.